Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning. We have been doing uh, plenty of uh, Hindi cinema, Indian cinema. I also took you along with me on a journey to Hindi films. Um, I also said at one point that uh, we will uh, be doing uh, some regional cinema as well, although not too much of it because of time constraints. So, today's class is all devoted to the great, uh, in fact one of the greatest filmmakers not just from India, but from across the globe, Satyajit Ray. Satyajit Ray, the great director, uh, principally from Bengal uh, and who predominantly made some of the greatest films uh, in Bengali language, who lived between 1921 and 1992. So, uh, he is recognized, I mean he does not really need introduction, one of the greatest filmmakers of all times. Now, his films are particularly noted for, of course, he was a master craftsman, but also for his humanity, his miniaturist style and psychological nuances. And uh, in today's class, I will be talking about all these three aspects with specific reference to race cinema and uh, um, also his position in world cinema. In the west, he is uh, celebrated as a Chekhovian artist. The word Chekhovian, someone who writes in the tradition of the Russian dramatist Anton Chekhov. Okay, so, we will also see why he is called Chekhovian artist. Ray was influenced by the international greats such as Frank Capra, uh, John Ford, also Sergei Einstein, William Wyler, David Lean and Jean Renoir. All these names are written here. In fact, in fact John Renoir was uh, here in India when he was shooting for his movie The River and Ray assisted him for quite some time. Ray uh, also discovered at the same time the Italian neorealists such as Lucino Visconti, Vittorio da Sica and Roberto Rossellini and therefore the influence of these neorealists on his films. One of his uh, all time greats is the Apu trilogy. It is a trilogy based on it is like coming of age film, but it is also um, like a, a movie that depicts the socio-cultural times in which a small boy lives and it is a story, also a story of migration from the rural to the urban. This is also a frequent or a regular motif, a device in all race films. So, Apu trilogy consists of Pathair Panchali. Aparajito and Apur Sansar, three films, three great films that made him a household name uh, in India as well as abroad. Um, the Apu trilogy is uh, prim uh, principally based on uh, the great Bengali writer, novelist novel, Bhibhuti Bhushan Bandopadhyaya's novel uh, and this was his debut film also about the magic of childhood and childhood discoveries amidst the extreme poverty of rural Bengal. Now, uh, much has been said about uh, uh, Pathar Panchali. It is generally regarded as one of the greatest films ever made. I will read out an excerpt from Ray, Ray's uh, 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 a memoir, My Years with Apu and his experience of making the trilogy the first part of trilogy that is Pathair Panchali. This is what Ray says, there was never a fully developed screenplay of Pathair Panchali, only a sheaf of notes and sketches. If it came to relating the story in the shape it would take as a film, 
I knew I didn't need a dossier because I knew the whole story by heart. As I have said before, the substance of the screenplay corresponded fairly closely to DK's abridgment and literally hundreds of characters had been dropped from the original book. It remained essentially the story of the indigent Brahmin priest Harihar Roy and his family consisting of his wife Sarbajaya, their daughter Durga and son Apu and an old bent cousin Indir Thakuran Pishi to the children. I shuffled across around the incidents a bit, reducing the somewhat formless rambling quality of the original and giving it a new texture. I also made auntie live much longer in my treatment because I knew that her sudden exit would disappoint the audience. In the original, she dies shortly after Apu is born, but in my treatment, she dies when Durga is about 10 or 11 years old. This needed a genuine scene when Apu and Durga discover her dead body in a bamboo grove, the children's first encounter with death. Uh, so, uh, the film is also remarkable for the treatment. Uh, there are several memorable scenes, but then also one of the scenes when uh, the little girl Durga, that is Apu's uh, sister, she dies. And here is uh, what, this is what Satyajit Ray says about this scene. An important change I had made was around the death of Durga. In the woods, Durga dances with joy in the monsoon rain and dies from what is formerly known as pneumonia, although in the original this is not shown as an after effect of her getting drenched in the downpour. I made her fall ill after the rainstorm scene in the woods. The lyrical dance in the rain is shown to be a distinct cause of her death. My treatment ended slowly after Durga's death with the family's departure to Banaras. I knew that Pather Panchali would have a very different look from the usual Bengali films. So, this is what he felt he, uh, he as a, uh, this was his first film, but he was absolutely convinced that it is going to be unlike anything that has ever been seen um, on Bengali as well as on Indian screen. See, we have been talking about um, a couple of, you know, um, art house films uh, are not so mainstream or commercial films such as Nicha Nagar, Dobiga Zameen, Bandini and also Jagte Raho. However, um, Apu Trilogy was something else altogether and it was one film that finally um, made the world recognize us that there is something like this could also happen. It put India in other words on the map of world cinema. The second part of the trilogy is uh, Aparajito and it depicts the increasing tension and distance between Apu and his mother. The third part is Apur Sansa uh, starring Somitra Chatterjee. Now the boy grows up and uh, he takes the form of a leading man and it was also the debut film of Sharmila Tagore. At the end of the film, Ray returns to his theme of childhood as uh, now older Apu, he walks away with his little son Kajol. The film completes Apu's moral and spiritual journey. So, here is a scene from Pathaya Panchali. Ray's uh, another monumental film is Jalsaghar. Uh, Jalsaghar or the music re, uh, room as it is called is uh, an elegy to the inevitability of change. Ray creates an unparalleled mood of melancholy. The story is of a widowed zamidar who lives in a mansion with memories of his past glory. It is Ray's reflection on a decadent class where he shows how the protagonist's ruin is self-wrought and self-brought. Jalsaghar is in line with uh, Visconti's La Terra Trama and Senso and it goes beyond his preoccupation with neorealism. The film laments how the nouveau rich have taken over the old aristocracy. At the same time, he also admires the patrons of our music and dance. According to uh, the famous critic Roger Ebert, 
despite the faded luxury surrounding huzur huzur by huzur we mean uh, the protagonist zamindar of jal sagar the film is not ornate in any way perhaps as a reaction to the hundreds of overwrought indian musical melodramas churned out annually ray made an austere character study also with music his hero deserves the comparison with king lear abbot goes on to say that because like lear he arouses our sympathy even while indulging his vanity and stubbornly doing all of the wrong things like lear he thinks himself a man more sinned against than sinning like lear he is wrong so this is a brilliant character study with uh, psychological nuances that i talked about at the beginning of this class that ray was a master of portraying psychological complexities of his character and he was uh, uh, excellent with character sketching so this is one reason why his films need to be analyzed and read devi a 1960 movie again starring somitra chatterjee and sharmila tego was based on a film uh, sorry story by prabhat kumar mukherjee um, it was a turn of the century story written in 1899 It's the story of uh, a beautiful woman, Daya, who lives with her husband, uh, Uma Prasad, and uh, her young son, Koka, and also her uh, extremely feudal and patriarchal, benevolent father-in-law in a rural mansion. The father-in-law had visions of his daughter-in-law in the form of an incarnation of the goddess Kali, and subsequently he starts worshipping her. Daya's husband Uma Prasad is the quintessential liberal educated uh, voice that uh, 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 Ray is very fond of portraying you know the dichotomy between the urban and the rural so Uma Prasad opposes his father and his beliefs and coaxes Daya to leave the mansion along with their film the film ends in a terrible tragedy uh, and however it is remarkable for its intense power okay and some of the scenes are remarkable for the intensity uh, among its many admirers is the great uh, hollywood filmmaker martin scorsese who has uh, uh, also discussed devi in a extremely admiring tones in several of his interviews um A landmark film of uh, Ray is Charulata, which is a 1964 film. It is based on Ravindran Tagore's short story Nasht Neer. This film, uh, this film is a tribute to Ray's meticulous skills in creating the ambience, which in this case is the 19th century Bengal. It is a tragedy of a sensitive, lonely, and neglected wife who falls in love with her husband's cousin. The film is remarkable for for uh, Ray's use of mise en scene, and also the unconscious process of falling in love. It's a forbidden love, and this too is portrayed with luminous intensity. Here is the famous opening scene from Charulata, starring Madhavi Mukherjee. Mahanagar uh, can be called. a uh, feminist film and it's also raise salute towards the empowerment of women aarti uh, again played by madhavi mukherjee is the central protagonist who is compelled to work in an office when her husband cannot make the ends meet however she shows great integrity when she quits her job to stand against her boss uh, the boss who tries to exploit her um, anglo indian colleague The film is about gender equality. The hero, so the husband, uh, his pride is hurt when the wife becomes the mainstay of the family. However, there is a sense of comprehension when she resigns her job. For the first time in Ray's films, the camera moves fast with the rhythms of the city, uh, capturing the rhythms of the city of Calcutta. Here is a scene from. mahanagar
Nayak is a 1966 film which stars Uttam Kumar and Sharmila Tagore. The film portrays the psychological conflicts of a big time star Arindam as played by Uttam Kumar. The film uses the conceit of a journey where the hero embarks on a train journey to Delhi to collect an award. In the train he meets a young journalist Aditi played by Sharmila Tagore who interviews him for a women's magazine. Also aboard he meets several people who are either overwhelmed by his presence or show open disdain for the line of work he is in. Like Fellini's 8 and 1/2 Ray uses the trope of dreams to explore the subconscious of the actor and the make believe life he leads. As in 8 and 1/2 Ray also uses the flashback devices and the narrative moves back and forth. The film can be seen as a reflection about acting as a profession and about cinema on the whole here is a clipping from nayak the dream sequence uh ray's 1970 masterpiece is aranyar din ratri literally or uh, uh, um, uh, if we translate it it's called days and nights in the forest it's a film with psychological overtones and reflects on the relations between men and women and also between men and the nature the story is about four young uh, men from calcutta who visit a forest to live in a rented bungalow again the dichotomy between city and the rural ray reveals the true nature of each person particularly through their relationship with women the group then suddenly leaves for calcutta standing at the crossroad of their lives the movie has to be seen for its immense beauty and for the psychological nuances uh ray made one hindi film in his entire career and that is shatranj ke khiladi it is also a 70s films a 70s film sorry uh, it's based on munshi premchand story of the same name and uh, this is ray's take on the royalty from lucknow the two protagonists mirza as played by sanjeev kumar and meer as played by sai jafri the carefree nawabs of lucknow who spend all their time playing chess and ignoring their domestic life and also their political duties this becomes a metaphor for the story as wajid ali shah the ruler of uh, lucknow he faces an imminent attack by the british so that's a parallel track running while um, the nawabs meer and mirza they are lost in the game of chess wajid ali shah the patron of art and culture is lost in the world of aesthetics thus ignoring his political commitments and thus making himself vulnerable to attack by the british the film is remarkable for its visuals and authentic representation of north indian politics and aristocratic lifestyle uh, the film had uh, an excellent cast headed by sanjeev kumar sai jafri and amjad khan and also shabana azmi farooq sheik and sir richard attenborough interestingly amitabh bachchan is the narrator of the film so here is the opening sequence from shatranj ke khiladi with Amitabh Bachchan as the narrator and his voice over Ghare Baire is one of his most lauded film it's a 1984 film adapted from a Ravindranath Tagore novel by the same title the novel is based on Tagore's own experiences as a swadeshi leader Central to the film is the changing character of Bimala the protagonist. Ray explores the emergence of the modern woman by moving away from the traditional expectations. Bimala uh, as played by Swati Lekha Chatterjee is the wife of a landlord Nikhil that played by Victor Banerjee who has had a western education in England and has liberal views. She is content to live in sec- uh, seclusion. of a um, inner apartments very grandly and almost claustro phobically decorated and she has no desire to break the custom to explore the outside world therefore ghare and baire that home and the world uh in her life arrives uh, 
a young man who is a, a on the surface he is a radical thinker, free thinker, um, her husband's friend. At his coaxing, um, at her husband's coaxing also, she begins to take lessons from an English governess and takes the symbolic walk down the corridor to the outside world for the first time. Now, uh, this friend Sandeep as played by Sumitra Chatterjee, he is a charismatic nationalist leader staying in the guest in the palace. The film like Charulata is about a woman's journey. The film is also about the process of how she starts depending on Sandeep who at the end turns out to be quite different from what she expects him to be. So, here is a clipping from Gare Bairi. Ray experimented with detective and musical genres as well. His first thriller, Chidiya Khana, that is the zoo, narrates the escapades of Bakshi, played by Uttam Kumar, um, who is a detective on trail of an ex actress. Also famous are his Felunath stories. Ray published 15 books about his detective hero between 1969 and 1987. He also worked extensively, um, made films uh, um, on television. So, he also made an adaptation of Ibsen's An Enemy of the People called Ganeshatru. So, Ray was awarded with a lifetime achievement, um, an Oscar award for the lifetime achievement and uh, this was the pinnacle of his success. He died soon after that. So, one of the greatest filmmakers from our country and from across the globe, Satyajit Ray. So, thank you very much. We will continue with parallel cinema in our next classes.